Hopefully I've pressed the right button. Hi, my name is Steve Wallace. I'm the director for the Foundation of the Advancement of Social Theory. I'll be attending the Modes of Explanation conference in Paris this spring. Um, as we all know, we got a lot of problems in this world. We have pro crime, poverty, war, social injustice, economic collapse. And the way we deal with these problems, the way we understand them so we can address them effectively, is through our theories. Um, unfortunately, we have a little problem of recursion here, is that we have no way to understand our theories, so we have no way to choose the best theory to address the problems most effectively. Um, there are existing tools, of course, but they're primarily intuitive which is a really bizarre situation because we have these academic theories based on rigorous empirical research but we evaluate them, we choose them based on the, the mishmash of mental models in our heads. We don't have a rigorous tool for evaluating rigorous theories. It's as if we're trying to move a pile of shovels using a handful of sand. It's completely backwards. So. Previous scholars, uh, I'm thinking here uh, Dubin, Stinchcomb, Kaplan, have suggested that the structure of a theory might be a good indicator of that theory's ability to be effective in practical application. Okay? Sounds reasonable. Unfortunately, they did not provide a useful measure for the structure, which is a pity because structure is very interesting. The higher level of structure would suggest that the theory is more tightly integrated, more of a system unto itself. And it seems to me, this is an assumption here, that if we have a systemic world, if indeed our world is systemic, which we systems people seem to think it is, that systemic world would best be understood through theories that are also systemic. So this is the focus of my participation in this conference using propositional analysis to evaluate the, the conceptual structure of these theories, these explanations. Now, my investigation suggests that there's a very small number of very succinct logics. For example, the atomistic logic, A is true. Doesn't seem to be very useful in practical application uh, for building or evaluating theories, because that kind of atomistic truth claim is so contextual. Every person, every situation, you're going to have a different sense of what is true. Similar with uh, linear logics or uh, circular tautologies. Now, what I did find was useful is this concatenated structure of logic where there's two causal elements and one resulting element. And uh, an interesting thing is that the greater percentage of concatenated structures within a theory, the more systemic, the more interrelated all the components of the theory are going to be. So using this approach, I analyze the uh, theory, uh, the evolution of a theory of electrostatic attraction over 1800 years. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It took me considerably fewer than 1,800 years to analyze the evolution of the theory. Uh, the theory itself evolved over 1,800 years. Uh, and back in the day, uh, ancient times, the theory was approximately 10% constructed of concatenated logics. And the theory failed to be very useful in practical application. After the scientific revolution, the theory was 100% made of concatenated logics, and that worked really well. So this is the focus of my work and what I would like to uh, talk about and talk with you uh, during this conference. Um, I would greatly appreciate your insights into what do you see are the strengths and weaknesses of this approach. Perhaps there are some additional structures of logic that I have not considered that might be useful for evaluating theories. and primarily the application of this approach. Because if we can develop this kind of approach for analyzing, comparing, 
our academic theories, we can more easily choose between the th our theories and choose the best theories for addressing and resolving the problems of the world. So I look forward to talking with you at the conference and seeing you in Paris in the spring. And hopefully I've pressed the right buttons here.